So in the last video I promised that I'll show you some fancy new features like bandit raids and vehicles. I also showed you the awesome new map as well as the new game mode with other survivors and quests. Alright, so with the new map and quest system you happen to get a lot of stuff. You either loot it or you get it as rewards for completing quests. Well, it would be too bad to let that stuff decay. That's why I've added a storage system. If you don't put your weapons in storage, they will eventually break and you will lose them forever. This new feature will also be used for food and basically any other item, but it only works for weapons now. Keeping your weapons outside of the storage is not the only way to get them destroyed. Using your weapons makes their condition worse. If you let that condition get too bad, you might regret it. Why? Well, if the weapon durability reaches zero, the weapon will break. That's not too scary for melee weapons, they'll just break into multiple pieces and you'll need to run for your life. But if you are using a ranged weapon, it will explode in your hands and the bullets will fly everywhere. That's something that you definitely don't want to happen. If you decide to be responsible and keep your stuff safe in storage boxes, it should be safe forever. Right? Well, actually not. Just like you can attack other survivors. They can attack you now too. There's a random chance of bandits forming a raid on your base and they'll aim for your storage boxes too. In fact, their main goal will be destroying your storage boxes. And when they destroy one, some of the stored stuff will be ejected, but some of it will be lost forever. There's currently only one type of storage, this wooden box, which has a pretty high chance of you losing your stuff, so you better keep it safe. I'll add more advanced storages like lockers and safes in the future. Smell of gas and burning rubber, you gotta love it. This update brings vehicles, or more like revives them. Vehicles were actually one of the first features that I've added to the game, but kept them in this sort of prototype stage for the entire time. Now they are actually in the game and you can drive them and wait for it. They have sounds, yeah, after two years of development, finally. So if you don't know about vehicles already, I'll remind you real quick. Vehicles in Polycalypse are actually made out of several components like wheels, engine, car, battery, etc. And you are able to place these parts manually, one by one. And most of the parts will fit into multiple different vehicles, so you can create your custom vehicles. If you ever wanted to drive a combine harvester with a sports car's engine, well, there's your chance. Making your custom car is very cool, but if you truly love your car, you gotta take care of it. I made that possible for you by adding these tools that will help you repair your car's parts. These tools are used the same way as a lighter. You equip them from the inventory, you aim at a part you want to fix, and you press Q and watch the overly simplified animation play. Talking about wrenches and stuff, who doesn't want to smash some zombies using some of these tools? That's why I've added some tools that can be used just for that, like a crowbar, a pipe wrench, and my favorite, a sledgehammer. Together with those melee weapons, I've added nail guns, a light and a heavy one. As much as they are bad weapons in terms of damage and accuracy, and the only weapon that kills zombies in two headshots, they don't make a single sound when fired and zombies can't hear them. Speaking of sounds, I've added a bunch of them, also repaired some old sounds. Weapons will now have a sound with more kick and it feels awesome. Bullets will also make sound now, either when they hit something or they fly near the player. They will sound awesome in both ways. I've also worked on some smaller stuff like farming, so you can actually plant stuff now and harvest it after it's grown. Also you can build your own weapons workbenches, which are, if you remember, used to upgrade and customize your weapons. So you can make some really cool weapons, but the attachments are very rare to find. Just like the explosives, which can now be used for faster woodcutting. Who uses axes anyways? If you were following my Twitter, which you should absolutely do, I post this old man and left a subtle hint that I was working on a tutorial. I mean, I literally said what I was doing, but anyways, the tutorial is done. I made a small farm scene where you can talk to this old man, which is basically old you, and ask him explain some game mechanics to you. It's not a boring and long tutorial, and I recommend everyone to go through it to understand the game better. The last thing I did was upload some new screenshots to the Steam page. I would really appreciate it if you checked it out and dropped a wishlist. The link will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.